In this film, we will show you the installation, calibration and parameter setting of Krypton DES. First, connect the inlet. Then connect the outlet. For the electrical installation, unscrew the screws and then remove the instrument from the housing. The connection diagram can be found on the back of the instrument. It shows the terminals for power supply, dosing and alarm relays, two milliampere outputs and two digital inputs, as well as the terminals for the sensors. Pull the cables through the cable glands on the bottom of the instrument. Make sure that power is switched off during the wiring. Connect cables and terminals according to the connection diagram. Take out the terminals for cable connection. Connect the power supply to the green terminals marked L and N. In our example, we use relay 1 for controller output and connect the pump to terminals 70 and 71. In this case, relay 2, terminals 73 and 74 is not used. Then we connect the alarm to terminals 76 and 77. Neon DES is equipped with two analog outputs. In this video, we connect the outputs for reading out the measured value and temperature. Observe the polarities of the milliampere outputs, which are indicated by plus minus signs above the terminals. The digital input for flow control is already connected. The external controller stop is to be connected to digital input 2 using terminals 53 and 54. After that, replug the terminals and once again check the correct allocation of the cables. Put the instrument in the housing and screw it tight. When the power is switched on, the instrument starts with a self check and displays first the time and then the measured values. All output options of the instrument can be set manually in the test menu. You can switch each relay and set values for each milliampere output to check whether the wiring is correct and the output reaches the PLC. As soon as you exit the test menu, all test settings get lost and the outputs return to their previous states. No valid access code has been set at delivery. Use access code 1612 to access all parameters and settings. The sensor is delivered in a transport protection with highly concentrated saline solution. Remove the transport protection from the sensor and install it. Before you connect the cable to the sensor, check that the correct measuring parameters are set in the menu. Now connect cables and sensors. If a temperature sensor is connected, Set the temperature mode to Auto to get the reading. If the measured value deviates from the expected value, you can correct the value in the menu. If you didn't connect a temperature sensor, you can set the temperature value manually. If you want to use temperature also for compensation, you can set a temperature coefficient in percent per degree Kelvin in the temperature menu. A coefficient of 2% per degree Kelvin has proven useful for many applications. You can also set the reference temperature for compensation. Make sure that all cocks are in their correct positions. especially that the sample cock is closed and the sensor screwed in tight. Open the water inlet. The event message, no water, disappears. 
You can calibrate the disinfectant measurement as soon as the measurement has stabilized. For the calibration procedure, you have to determine the chlorine concentration in the water with a reference method. Carry out a reference measurement using, for example, our photometer radon. Take a water sample at the sample point and determine the chlorine content. Use the reference value for calibration. We measured 0.64 mg per litre. On the basis of this value, the instrument then calculates the sensor-specific data. In this case, the slope is 22.5 mV. The info menu displays the last 10 calibrations. The instrument has various alarm functions. In the Alarm Action menu, you assign the alarm relay to the events Slope, Measuring Range Over Range, Limit Values, Digital Inputs and Dosage Check. Factory Set All Events are assigned. If an event occurs, the alarm relay, Relay 3 switches. To undo an assignment, untick the respective box in the menu. A delay time can be set for the alarm relay. In that case, the alarm relay switches only if the event lasted longer than the delay time. On the display, the event is indicated immediately. If, for example, the delay time is set at 10 seconds, the alarm relay will switch after 10 seconds in case of an activated event. The factory set limit values correspond to the measuring range. You can select smaller range sections in this menu. The alarm relay can be inverted from normally open contact to normally closed contact to achieve wire breakage protection, triggering an alarm if the instrument is cut off from power supply. We connected 1 mA per output that may be used as readout for measured value, temperature value or control variable. You can choose whether you want to set the output range to 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 mA and whether you want a 22 mA alarm to go off in case of faulty measurement information. The mA output can be scaled if you are interested in just a certain section of the measuring range, for example 0 to 1 mg per litre. The minimum value always corresponds to the minimum mA value, in this case 0 mA. The maximum value corresponds to 20 mA. The instrument provides a controller with two control relays and two set points that can be configured up to PID. In our installation, only the first relay was connected. As an example, we show you the settings for a PI controller with pulse frequency output. In the control menu, you first specify a set point, then choose the controller type. We choose PI. For fast flow systems, a PI controller has the advantage that remaining control deviations are eliminated. To determine the correct controller settings, start with a P controller and a large P range. To determine the integral time, reduce the P range until the measured value fluctuates constantly around the set point. Measure the time between subsequent maximum measured values. The ideal P range is 2.2 times the current setting and the ideal integral time is 0.85 times the measured time between maximum values. To configure the relay, switch the pulse type to pulse frequency.
set the maximum frequency, which corresponds to a 100% dosing rate. The frequency is reduced in relation to the controller output. You can switch off an unused relay to prevent permanent switching. Don't forget to set the direction, where the dosing raises or reduces the measured value. There are two time settings available for the controller. You can set a delay time that has to pass after controller stop caused by lack of water or power failure before dosing starts. Each controller variable has a dosage check function. If 100% dosing continues longer than the set time, the alarm is triggered and the controller stopped. This is to prevent dangerous chemicals from being released if injection pipes are broken. Set the instrument to automatic mode so that the instrument can start the dosing. You can choose different settings for the display in the menu system display. Choose Relay if you use the relays as controller output. Thus you can directly see the state of the relays. Additionally, you can switch off the controller in that screen. With touchscreen instruments, just touch the display text and scroll through the various options. However, whenever you enter the menu, the setting gets lost. The display returns to the setting selected in the menu. With Krypton systems, the first digital input is used for flow control. That means, without sufficient water flow, the input switches and the instrument shuts off the controller since the instrument cannot get reliable measured values without flow. If you have purchased a second digital input, you may use that one for controller stop as well, either as level monitor, so that dosing is stopped when the reagent container is empty, or as an external switch which allows you to stop the controller externally, for instance for batch procedures. Krypton systems are equipped with our patented automatic sensor cleaning, which cleans the sensor electrodes in regular intervals. Before activating the cleaning function, make sure you set the correct time and date. Check time and date to make sure the starting date is not in the past. Then select the cleaning intervals. You can choose between 0 and 7 times per week. For most applications, one cleaning cycle per week has proven absolutely sufficient. We recommend carrying out cleaning during night hours or at times when relatively low fluctuation can be expected. During the cleaning procedure, the milliampere outputs are frozen and the controller is switched off. If this is not admissible, as is the case with flow-through systems like ozonization systems, you have the possibility to set the controller to baseload. In this case, Dosing during the cleaning phase is based on the average value of the last 30 minutes. Whether this function is admissible lies within the operator's responsibility because temporarily dosing will not be controlled by measured values. When the baseload option is set, the first cleaning cycle after startup is delayed for 30 minutes to get the average. You can save all settings on the SD card, to restore them after a reset or to transfer the settings to other instruments. It is also possible to load new software into the instrument via the SD card. After uploading a new software, the system first performs a self-test and then displays the measured values.
All former settings are saved. The SD card function can be used as data logger. You can select the parameters to be logged. Measurement value, raw value of measurement value, temperature and the two controller outputs. The logging interval can be selected freely. If the memory card is full, logging will either be stopped or older data overwritten depending on your specific settings. Storage space is indicated by an analog bar. To remove the SD card, first switch off the logger and take the instrument out of the housing. The SD card is in the rear in the upper right hand corner. Push to eject. Do you have any questions? We will gladly assist you.